and just give testimony to what God did. We come here with a $200,000 debt. We don't know about 50 right now. God be the glory. God be the praise. Oh, you can shout better than that, I hope. And that ain't seven years. That's six years. Hello? I remember in 2019, a man brought me a check to my house. He was crying. And I prophesied over him. There was something held up in the courts. I didn't know what it was about. I didn't even know nothing about it. I just called him out where we was at Plant Avenue. And I told him what God was about to do. Three weeks later, it happened. It been held up for years. Amen. Yeah. It fell through at the court. And he was rewarded what he was asking for. He pulled his pen out and his hand was shaking. He was trying to write. And I said, brother, praise God. And he was just crying and sobbing. And then after he wrote it, he said, is that how you write this out? And then I like to fell off the couch. I said, brother, I guess. I don't know. I ain't never wrote nothing like that. God bless me with I would. It was $95,000 check. And I asked him, I said, where does this go? He said, it goes on the note of the church. I said, every penny of it will go there. Had somebody around here talking about, oh, now I can get on staff. I said, no, 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 ain't a penny of that going nowhere but where the Lord said for it to go. If he spoke to them, that's where, that's where it goes. Yeah. Amen. And that's where it went. Yeah. Another gave a $33,000 check, another a twenty two. Yeah. They told us when we got this property, we was going to have to pay the tax on it. A church now. The tax on it. The church, whether it's 301, whatever, you know, whether it's any of all that, it's still taxed as it, period. A lot of people don't understand that. It just is, period. And so I said, no, we're not. And I was told, yeah, you're going to have to. I said, no, we're not. And I was just defiant with, no, we're not. And, when they said, and then they sent us a letter and told us that we owed like 2000 something dollars. And I said, we're not paying that. We're going to, we're going to contend with this. We're not, we're not doing that. Cause, and they said, yeah, we're going to have to because the time's expired for us to get it. I said, no. You understand me? No. I said, no, the last time and a day later where God told me no, that you don't have to do that. I got a call and the brother was on the property where God told me today before and he called me on the phone. And he said, just got another letter and they said, we don't owe a dime. I said, where are you standing at right now? And he told me where. I said, God told me that yesterday where I was standing on the church property. You standing on it right now. It was in the backyard. I could take you to the point right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So from then to now, just six years later, just $50,000. Amen. Last Sunday morning, we had a almost $33,000 Sunday morning. Give God glory. Well, who? God, that's who. Don't you ever come to me and ask me who gave something. I'll never tell that. I'll never share that with anybody. That's between them and God. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Little church like that received that much? Yeah, and it was said, uh, amen, that within the note of that, uh, some of that goes to buy a church van. Some of it goes to update, uh, amen, our ministry as far as our, uh, you know, ministry online and stuff, new cameras and stuff like that. And amen, and the rest is just considered tithes, and that's exactly what will be done with it. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Uh, hallelujah. Somebody says how God works. Uh, but I'm telling you, right in the same week, uh, the enemy is frustrating me. I'm seeing... Uh, a reoccurrence of something that I've seen the year before, the year before, the year before. Amen. Glory to God. And this stuff just chaotic going on. All right in the middle of it. God said, now watch me bless. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Amen. And it was the an answer to their prayers, even those it gave. Come on, anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Somebody shout right in the middle of the mess where God will bless. <sighs> Lynn said, every time you make somebody mad, God blesses. Sister Melissa looked at me and she said, make somebody else mad. <laughs> yeah. 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 Praise God. Lynn's been advertising 60 people give, you know, or 50 people, 60 people give $1,000 just in the next year. Hello? And you mean you ain't got to do it all at one time. You can just do it along, along, along. We called it a 365 seed years ago. We'd do stuff like that in a year. Give a dollar a day, you'd be gave $365. Amen. Amen. But think about it. You may say, my God, that $1,000, can I do that? 
if the Holy Ghost tells you to, he'll give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, Isaiah 50, verse 10. Amen. Lynn just put it out there the other day and somebody gave a thousand a day from somewhere. There's people that sends tithes and offerings into this ministry that's never walked in this church. They're getting fed online. There's people up north in different states and out of country. Come on, somebody that's getting fed every time we go live. Amen. Praise God. People's getting touched by the Holy Ghost. Oh, glory to God. And I said that to say this. I'm believing before this time next year, this place will be paid for. Do you hear me? If God can do all that, amen, in that amount of time, because here's what the Holy Ghost told me at Plant Avenue when all this began and we knew we were going to purchase this property. And all of a sudden, God God went to speaking to people, amen, and thousands went to rolling in. When we come here, we had $50,000 and we didn't have hardly nothing prior to when we got, God, God gave us 20, amen, down on the payment of it and then turned around and we had 50 to work off of, amen, and when we had to put the sound system in, amen, and, have, and we was having to hurry up, son, amen, because they was getting ready to bring it and we was getting ready for the next service, didn't have much time, amen, God paid for it all. It was paid in full before we could get even get it done. Amen. God was moving and he's still moving. That's proof of it. But I promise you every time God does something mighty there's a mighty enemy attacking somewhere and you feel like my God. Amen. You feel lower. Amen. That a snake's belly and a wagon wheel rut. I mean you feel like you're just about to just amen. Glory to God. Go to the dust. You, you feel like you're just wasting away and then all of a sudden right in the middle of the attack here comes the anointing of the Holy Ghost and God does something something mighty and God told me in 2018 when he started doing stuff like this this ain't the first time we've seen that amen God told me then he said I will finish the rest and he started telling me matter of faith last Friday I was on my lawnmower at my house and God said ask me for the rest of it he said, I told you in 2018 I'd finish it. I said, Lord, I'm asking you for the rest of it. And two days later, that happened. You can't tell me the Holy Ghost won't move. Amen. Some ought to say if you'll just believe him, but some ought to say you got to stick with him long enough. you got to stay with him long enough. Come on, lift your hands. I'm going to ask him right now. Lord, I'm just going to ask you for the big one. Yes, I am. God, I ask you to pay this place off. I'm not just waiting for next year. Pay it off before this year ends. God, I'm asking you to pay it off. Yes, Lord, I'm asking you to pay it in full. God, you told me a year and a half ago to write the letters to the men that sat down at the bank with me that's no longer with us. They were two that was with us and one was not. He was another minister, a businessman. He was never, you know, a part of the church, but the other two were, and they're not. But besides all that, God, you told me to write those three letters to those three men and go ahead, amen, and prepare the letter to be able to send them and let them know the bank note is paid off and thank them for signing it with me regardless of any feelings, but thank them for signing it with me. And Lord, you know, a year and a half ago, I have wrote it in advance. I thank you, Lord. I believe before this year's out, and Lord, if it goes any further than that if it's hey, God by this time at least next year at least uh, 12 months from now and it could be uh, in a six month I'm not going to limit you uh, but God I will sign those letters uh, and I will mail them to their address uh, and tell them uh, that it is paid in full uh, we will walk into the bank uh, and say here it is uh, it is done it is done it is done uh, hallelujah and then Lord we'll do the other things you want us to do uh, hallelujah and Lord you told me we could have done things, amen, that we wanted to do, but you said no, not until it's paid off, and you told me you'd do the rest, so I stop right here on this seventh anniversary, and I declare as far as the numerology of God, the number seven, it is complete, it is finished, God, I ask you to finish it, God, I ask you to do the rest, because you promised me you would, and in Jesus' name, I ask for it, now join me in a praise to him, come on, praise him, you're going to remember tonight, you hear the Holy Ghost, you gonna remember tonight, you gonna remember what God was telling us he's gonna do. And this ain't because we just say, oh look what God done. No, for souls, for souls, so the gospel will be preached. Can you imagine what we could do if we weren't having to pay on something? Amen. And I believe it's God's will. I know it's God's will because he said he was going to finish it. God, I give you praise for the finishing of it. Somebody say the finishing of it. 
Before I get into the vision, revelation, because it's not going to take me long to do that. I'm going to read to you from Zechariah 4 because on Pentecost Sunday afternoon, I was preaching and the Holy Ghost told me you'd hear me say these things again. Remember that? About three or four weeks ago. So in Zechariah 4, God is speaking. We'll get to Acts 28, 31 in just a moment. In Zechariah chapter 4, the Lord is speaking to Joshua the high priest and Zerubbabel, who would have been equivalent to, you know, like a, a dignitary, a government man, somebody, you know, but yet he was, you know, God's man, even in that position. And uh, God was speaking to them and uh, showing them this vision as an angel talked with them and waked, you know, him out of sleep. He, he, old Zerubbabel, you know, he, the, the Bible gives us about seven visions that he had. And every vision he had, he was awake. But the seventh one he had, he was asleep. And somebody say, God sent him an angel to wake him up. Angel just means a messenger. Somebody say, that's what the messengers of God are supposed to do. They're supposed to wake us up if we're going to sleep. Because there's things you'll never see until you wake up in the spirit. God had to wake him up. And God began to show him, amen, a, a candlestick. And if you know Revelation 120, the candlestick's the representative of the church. The angel in Revelation 1 and 20 uh, to, to the seven churches, amen, in minor Asia was, or Asia minor, however you want to say it. <laughs> Hallelujah, were considered the messengers. We had call that equivalent as the pastors of each church, amen. And so God was saying here, the candlestick, it's of gold. It's going to have a bowl on top of it. I like that. The bowl's on top of it because the oil flows down. Somebody say, you can't work this up. It has to come down. Amen. That's how God works. Amen. Hallelujah. So here it is, the bowl of oil. We know that's the anointing of the Holy Ghost, his anointing. Amen. On top of it. Praise God. And it flows down, and he's showing how it flows down. The seven lamps, they're on the seven pipes, and the seven lamps, which are upon the top of it. So the pipes running down from the oil, flowing down, amen, into the candlestick to furnish it with the fuel, you know, the oil. And, and the two olive trees by it, and we know the olive tree representative of the Holy Spirit is anointing the anointing. And even the last scripture of Zechariah 4 tells us that these are the two anointed ones. And he was speaking prophetically about Joshua, the high priest, and Zerubbabel. Amen. So here it is. They're the, his anointed ones. And the angel talked with him and asked him, did you know what you're seeing? And he said, no, my Lord, I don't know. And listen, the word of the Lord came to him and spoke to him in verse 6 of Zechariah 4. Then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Literally, this was translated, it's not by your military might. It's not by your financial strength, your wisdom, that these things will be done, but it'll be by my spirit, saith the Lord. When you study that by my spirit, that phrase, that statement, that's the equivalent to a signature. I call it the signature of the spirit. Somebody say God's anointed autograph. God says, I have signed my name to it. And if I said it, it's going to be done. Hello? But it's going to be by the Spirit. Somebody say by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And notice what he says. When the Holy Ghost, when it's by him, you'll be able to say, Who art thou? Verse 7, O great mountain before Zerubbabel. Thou shalt become a plain or a valley, a low place, not a high place like a mountain to be made low. And he shall bring forth the headstone. The headstone would be called here the gable stone. It's the finishing stone. Somebody to say the finishing stone. Not a headstone in a graveyard, but a finishing stone, a, a memorial marker. Amen. A monument to what God did. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? And he said, you'll be crying and shouting saying grace and grace unto it. Somebody say favor, favor unto it. Somebody say a finishing stone. Somebody say not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit says the Lord of hosts. What? God says by my Holy Ghost will I finish what I start. It won't be you. It'll be me. And God said, I'll let things come against you. So when it does happen, you'll know it was me. And you won't be able to take any credit. Hey, man, you just alone for the ride. But somebody tonight, we need to go ahead and advance on credit. Do what God was saying to Zerubbabel. If the Holy Ghost is here and he is, we ought to shout at every mountain and say to it, you will become a plane. And we should go ahead and 
shout grace, grace unto it, favor. Thank somebody say the favor to finish. That's what happens when the Holy Ghost gets on you. You speak to mountains. You don't run in retreat. You say the favor of God will finish what he starts, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. I'm glad nobody was sitting there. I just spit all over <laughs> Jesus spit on people and they got healed. So. Yeah. Uh, then in verses 8, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, somebody say moreover. Yeah. Y'all experience that a lot here. The word keeps coming moreover. By the time you think it's over, here comes some more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. Verse 10, For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet. Praise God. Amen. The tape measure. Woo. In the hand is a rubble with those seven. And they are the eyes or the seven eyes, the fullness. The fullness. Somebody say God fully sees. Ain't nothing hid from him. Amen. Amen. The seven eyes which are of the Lord which run to and fro throughout the whole earth. This number seven means the finishing. In other words, when you start seeing this the way God is trying to show it to you, you'll see the finish before it ever happens. Somebody shout, this is a vision of the finish. What God starts, he finishes. Oh, we need to hear that tonight. It's not by might. It's nor by power. What God starts, he will finish by his Holy Ghost. Amen. In the same hands. Amen. That laid the foundation will also be the hands that finish it. Look at somebody, tell them, say, if you'll stay with the Holy Ghost, you'll finish. You'll be a finisher. You won't be finished. You will finish what God gives you. But stay with the Lord. Stay with the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout, the Holy Ghost never quits. And if you in him, you'll never quit. Oh, glory to God. Somebody shout, we got only one call. Finish this race. Finish what God God says we got too many quitters. We got too many having to temper tantrums. If they don't get their way fleshing out, God ain't changing his plans as much as people are changing their plans. God ain't changing his word as much as people are sounding like God somehow. He's confused. And now God's telling them something different that contradicts what he already told them to begin with. Somebody shout, finish it. If you surrender to the Holy Ghost, you finish what you start. Amen. You don't quit. The only way I can quit, I'd have to step outside the Spirit. I'd have to quit Him before I could quit what He said to do. Amen. Some might say, don't despise the day of small beginnings. It's not by mine, nor by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Somebody say, God will soon set up a monument of stone and it'll say it is finished. Uh, the finishing stone. Woo! Matter of faith, I'm going to go ahead and do it by credit. I'm going to go find me somebody that can engrave in a stone. And I'm going to put some of those sayings in it. And I'm going to set it right up here so we can see it every time. We will finish it. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. What is? Whatever God starts, he finishes. And whatever he called you to do, finish it. Somebody say, we ain't got time to quit. We ain't got time to hold back, lay back, recline back, go back. Because he's coming back. And he that endures to the end, the same is going to be saved. Amen, Matthew 24, 13.